Blog Talk Radio. Hello, this is Cherokee Billy. I hope this is recording. I've been... Uh, yeah, hi, Ray. Yeah, I Hello. know you're there. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I'm running a bit late. As you know, uh, my computer, everyone, when I came to go into the program, blocked me. It said, that, you know, it was a virus or something. I've been doing this program off and on for 13 years. Never had this problem. But anyway, we're here. Oh, thank goodness. Ray, I'm glad you're there with me as we talk about the spirituality of animals. Um, how do I even begin? There's so much with animals. First off, yep. I think anyone who has truly loved an animal, they know they have a soul. And people who think they don't, I wonder about those people. Because you can't have an animal, I don't care what type of animal, without knowing there is a soul there. Any thoughts, Ray? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, not only do I think that they have a soul, I think as a role in their own way, a lot of animals are very, very intelligent. Uh, I, I mean, it, it, a soul, you know, I mean, it's like when you, you go home, and your dog jumps up in your arms if you haven't seen him for a while and wags his tail and, and beats the heck out of you with his tail. Uh, it, it, if he didn't have a soul, he wouldn't, they, they just wouldn't care. They'd just lay there and go, yeah, okay, you're home, big deal. Yeah, but, exactly, uh, but they know love. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's, you can't have love from, a, from anything if, uh, if they don't care. If you if you're getting love from something, then they gotta love they they gotta have a soul. Exactly, and they do. You know, I mean, uh, the Catholic Church named Saint Francis of Assisi uh, as the patron saint of animals. Now, if they didn't have a soul, why would they bother to have a saint over him? I think that's a real good example of you know belief on a spiritual level, because I encounter. Not often, but I encounter people who say they don't have a soul. And I'm like, whoa. Because um, think about it like a dog. It'll wait knowing exactly when you're coming home. And let's say it isn't after work that you're coming home from the market. Something different. They know exactly when you're coming back. How do they know that? They've got extrasensory perception for sure. Look at how uh, dogs or cats. Uh, have found their way home when they've been lost, I mean, thousands of miles, and sometimes taken them a year, and they find their home. Unbelievable stories are out there about animals that, you know, again, if there was no soul, how could that happen? Exactly. Uh, I know with, with my cat, um, I was away for about a month, and he was young at the time. And uh, I, I walked in the door, and he started to run. And, and I, you know, I said, "Where are you going? Get back here!" And, and I mean, it, it, it finally, I finally called his name. He stopped. He looked at me, and then I called him. Um, uh, I called him his nickname. And, and don't ask me to repeat it here because I'm not going to. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, he come running up to me like, like, oh, you know, it, 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 you're there. It just is actually you. <laughs> yeah. At first, he wasn't sure. Is this an imitation? I don't trust it. You know, that was his opinion. But, you know, I've had many experiences with animals. I had a parakeet that was just marvelous. And I had to go in the hospital. And I was gone for a month. And she had to stay at my parents' home. And when I got out of the hospital and got to her at my parents' home, because I had to stay there for a while to recover. Um, she started crying, literally crying. My mother just couldn't believe it. She said, I never saw a bird cry. There you go. And that was just a little baby parakeet 
she was so wonderful. I've written several stories about her. I've written a lot about my animals because they've taught me so much. Again, they're the master, I'm the student. Absolutely. Yeah, they've, they've just got, you know, again, looking into their eyes, you just see the depth of what is there. You can't miss it. Uh, you know, you mentioned about your cat. I've been away from my animals. Like, I used to travel a lot in my work. And um, I had a dog, and she would stay with my parents. And when I was gone, she just laid by the front door. She wouldn't move. My father had to pick her up and move her to go in and out the door. She wouldn't move. Just, you know, a little bit maybe to eat or go to the bathroom, but she was right back at that door. And uh, I would always call and talk to her. Now, this is way back when I didn't understand I was communicating with animals the way I do. But I would call from wherever I was, and I'd talk to her. And it would always make her feel better. She'd calm down. But then when I finished the conversation, she'd go right back to that front door every hmm. time. Yeah. Well, I know. And, oh. Well, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you got it. You or me. All right. Oh, uh, you. My cat, Isis. <laughs> well, I want to talk about my cat, Isis. Uh, absolutely the most incredible animal I've ever encountered in my life. And how I say this is, I'd had her about two years, and um, one morning I was sound asleep, and I heard a woman's voice say calmly, in plain English to me, someone's in the house. I immediately opened my eyes, and when I did, Isis was on top of my chest. Her face was right at my face. And at the place I lived at the time, I had closed-circuit TV. I turned on the television, moved the cameras, and I saw where the person was in the house. And I'm like shocked, you know. And uh, I scared them off because I spoke real loud to them through the intercom. And they took off running. They thought I was a ghost. But I just couldn't believe, I mean, what, what ISIS had done. I never from that moment ever underestimated anything about her. Amazing cat. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. I know. I've had, uh, I had a, I had a horse, and uh, the horse's name was Charlie, and uh, somebody had broken into the house beside where I was living, and the cops are at the front door, and uh, you know I, I was talking to the cop, and you know so, and then I hear the horse carrying on out back. I see the horse is carrying on. I'll be back in a minute. Well, as I got in the paddock with the horse. Uh, I saw something coming down. There was a path. I saw something coming down. I didn't know what it was, so I grabbed a club. And a as it worked out, it was uh, the cop. It was a cop with a dog, uh, looking for whoever broke into the house beside us. But uh, but I mean, I would go to the right. The horse wouldn't let me around him. I would go to the right. He'd go to the right. I'd go to the left. He'd go to the left. I tried to <laughs> you know get up alongside him. He kept moving so I mean he was he was there to protect me and uh but I mean it was it was funny because they start calling the attack horse after that and uh but I mean yeah. it was it, it, if he didn't care if he didn't think he didn't have a soul it, I would be the last one that he would want to protect again they know you know I communicate with animals as many people know and I've communicated with a lot of horses whoa they are so spiritual so sensitive for you know being as big as they are they're very delicate I don't know how to put it but that's the way I sense horses as delicate and creatures they are and if you um, if you get them upset with you if you if they don't like you you're gonna know uh, yeah you will definitely they don't hesitate yeah no. and they're and, you know, Native Americans, of course, used horses tremendously. That was their main source of transportation. And they understood the spirituality of horses. They really revered them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they, uh, they probably, you know, I don't know for a fact, but I would say that they protected uh, whoever owned them, or I have a lack of word to use, whoever owned them, 
Uh, they protected yes. them just like Charlie protected me. Yes, I believe that. Back to Native American spirituality, they believed in animals having a soul. They always did. And like when they would kill an animal for food, they always did a prayer ceremony after the kill and really acknowledged it. And they would always use every part of that animal. Nothing was wasted. No organ, no bone, no nothing. And that was, right. you know, their way of reverencing the animal. That's why the headdresses would be of animals. Again, they would take on the spirit they felt of that animal. Exactly. I mean, it, they had uh, they had a, I do believe it, no, it wasn't a Disney show. Uh, the Horse Whisperer. In the beginning, uh -huh. it shows you where the car was coming towards the horse, or to, yeah, towards the horse with the girl, on, little girl on it. And uh, the horse reared up and, and went after the car. Uh, to protect the, the little girl. Hmm. But that, I yeah. mean, you'd have to see the whole show to understand it, but, which I'm sure. not going to go into, but yeah. Yeah, it, again, animals prove it over and over. And again, I've never seen an animal do some of the things that humans do, you know, the cruelty that humans exhibit. You don't see it in animals. That's a if fact. They did it, if they did it, there was a reason why they did it. Absolutely. They, they would just, have a valid they reason. Just do it. Right. They didn't just do it just to do it. They, they did it because they had a reason to do it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, unfortunately with the human race, they don't need a reason. They'll just do things. And you sit right. there and shake your head going, what the world is wrong with people? I say that so many times. You know, the cruelty that people exhibit to one another. And again, animals may attack another animal, but it's usually reasons. You know, the natural predators or whatever. Wolves, uh, you know, they attack. Everybody says, well, wolves, wolves are nasty. Well, they attack an animal so they can have something to eat, so they can survive. Exactly. They don't it's just for no attack reason. an animal. Yeah. yeah, they just don't attack an animal just to attack them. No, that's definitely, you know, they've got a valid reason. And again, like right. you say, food. That's a pretty valid reason. Anybody who's uh, been really starved and hungry will know what it's like. Right. And well, I mean, like, you know, back in the 1800s, they end up killing the buffalo just to... <laughs> Kill well just for uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Just, just for their just for their uh, coats and stuff like that, and they just leave the rest shit and rot. Well, you got people yeah. that were depending on that to, uh, to eat, and they just left them sit there and and, and lay, you know cut their hides off and just let the rest of them sit and rot. Very much so. You know, it was very sad the slaughter of the buffalo. You know, very very sad. Such magnificent animals. Again, very and, revered and by the Native Americans for a reason. While they they supplied them with everything that they needed, and yes. and they didn't everything. They, they didn't take what they didn't need. You know, they, they didn't say, "Well, I want uh, I, I want five hides," and, and they only needed one. So, and I mean, but like you said, they would use everything for carrying Every water. Uh, doing whatever it is that they ha they're going to do. Absolutely. You know, many people don't know the movie you and I have talked about many times, the um, one White Buffalo with Charles Bronson. Oh, for anybody yeah. out there, if you haven't seen it, it's available on YouTube. It's a great movie, and so much of the spirituality of the buffalo is brought up in this movie. And like you st started talking about the slaughter, it's also brought up in the movie you know, what the cruelty that was done to the buffalo, which also damaged the Native Americans' way of life. Right. Well, they showed you that also in uh, Dancers with Wolves. For yes, that's true as well. Uh, but they, Will Sampson, he basically said it just the way it was because uh, he was like, I think that he played the part of Geronimo. Uh, yes. And he said it just the way it was. So and then no, he played uh, Charles Johnson was Buffalo uh, 
I forget what Buffalo Bill, Bill, I think his name Wild, is. No, yeah. Wild Bill Hickok. Yeah, yeah, he Wild was. Bill. But uh, uh, again, Will Sampson played Crazy Horse, not Geronimo. Yeah, that's right. I don't know why I said Geronimo. Different country, uh, or not different country, different part of the country. Different tribe. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a, yeah. It, you know, it brings up a lot of points. Again, the spirituality of animals in this movie was made in the 70s when people weren't thinking so much about the spirituality of animals. And or anybody movies. else. <laughs> yeah, well, and that still applies even today, on, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, with the, the world in constant chaos, as we all know, and especially right now, there's a lot of chaos. You know, and again, turn to the animals for spirituality for peace of mind, for whatever, they're going to give it to you. Right. I know, I worked in, like I, like you know, I worked in the casinos for, for many years, and uh, probably the biggest piece that I had was when I was, uh, when I was in a barn working with horses. Uh, it was yeah. always, you know, uh, and I mean, they would do funny stuff, you know, they just bump you or something like that, and they say, don't you do that, well, they, and they just look at you. And well, they have a sense of humor, I feel. Oh, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Oh, yes. And they, and they will show you, too. <laughs> yes, definitely. You know, and like, like, I've never had a monkey, but look at the intelligence of monkeys. You know, enormous. You know, I mean, a lot of them, they, they can do. Well, they sent, they sent them to outer space, so they got to have some sort of brain. Oh, they definitely do. You know, they're the closest thing to us, and I think they're probably a little bit better than the human race. I'm not real high on the human race anymore with all I've seen through the cruelty and what I've experienced in my life. It makes you, it leaves you wondering. It really does. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, uh, it, it, it you wonder why people do what they do uh, and for, for what reason, you know. Exactly. Uh, what is behind it? It doesn't make sense. Well, that was like all this stuff over in Israel right now. What was the reasoning behind it? Uh, they never did say, nobody said. It just, that, did they do it just for fun or just to be whatever? You know, I, I, I don't understand. I couldn't this. say. You know, yeah, I have written either. a book for people who don't know about are we in the end times, and I reference the different Bible scriptures, and so much of the signs of the end time have to do with what happens in Israel. So it's significant on more than one level what is going on there. It's tied into Bible prophecy. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. So everybody out but, there, uh, think about that. Go ahead. But uh, I mean, the the the, the animals are uh, they're, they're they're just I mean they they, they you, you said I'm just going to use a dog for instance, and well, I, could, I guess I could use a cat too. If you're sad, they're right there, and they're you know licking your tears or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, if you're happy, then they're jumping around and having fun with you. Uh, oh yeah. So I mean, it, but it, they, it, they it, know it, when you're sad, and they don't want you to be, and that's why they're there trying to say, "Don't cry. We love you. You know, you're, everything's okay." That's kind of the attitude right. they have. Right. Right. And, and I mean, it just it, it doesn't matter. It's it's it, you know, it, they they know they and if they didn't have souls. If they didn't have a brain, uh, you know, it, it, then they would just turn around and they wouldn't be doing any of that. You know, you brought up about souls because animals do have souls. That's the point. And uh, right. when they die, they live on in the spirit world. People call it, based on a Native American teaching about life across the Rainbow Bridge. And uh, the animals do live on. And in spirit, heaven, whatever name you want to give it, it's unlimited space. So it can hold billions and trillions of animals, humans, whatever. It, it's just massive. 
So there's no limitations. And, you know, I've seen my animals in spirit. I'm sure many of you have experienced, you know, some sort of communication from your animals after passing. So you know that they live on. It's not imagination. Like uh, back to my cat Isis, she passed in 2015, and one of the she's appeared many times to me. I've woke up with her underneath my arm, like she used to do in life. She would lay under it flat, very amazing. And uh, one morning, I woke up feeling her little sandpaper tongue licking my forehead. And I had forgotten about how she liked to do that. And she woke me up, reminding me of what she used to do. And it was just such a marvelous moment, you know, to experience that. Yeah, it's just, it, it's a, you know, I mean, it, it's amazing. And the old, whether it's a joke or whether it's serious, I don't know. But they said, when you, when you pass and you go to cross the bridge, if, the, if your animals say, forget about it, you're not going there, then, it, yeah. it, you know, it's not going to happen. Uh, but well, I they think say about, like, all, these hunters, you know, the people who hunt for no reason, you know, just for the sport of killing. I'm sure the trophies, animals yeah. are going to have something to say there. Absolutely. So, you know, but, you think about that. I mean, oh, I knew a guy who worked for my father, and he went down to South America, and they did a hunting trip, and I saw the picture. It was horrible. It was like 22,000 birds just stacked up so high you couldn't believe it, and he's standing in front of them with a gun, all proud. Hmm. It was just disgusting to me. Uh, well, I hope they gave them to somebody so they can eat. No, they just tossed them away. Uh, that 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 that's a total waste as far as I'm concerned. Well, yeah, yeah and there's no reason to then, kill. Yeah, what's the point? You know, I mean, twenty two thousand. It was just you'd have to see. It was like way above the height of these people. You know, way above six feet. It was such a huge pile. It just made me sick when I saw the picture. You know, at you know, it was done for sport. And that's, that magic that, that's the wrong, wrong way to do things. I realize, no. you know, you have to keep certain uh, certain things under uh, well, uh, under um, under control. We'll say. I mean, you can't yes. have uh, a, a thousand coyotes running around. So, in that case, you're going to have to do something. But you know, you you keep them under control, but you don't just kill just to kill. No. And that's, again, that word sport comes in, you know. Right. And uh, it may be sport to them, but, you know, you think about these people who today in this world uh, hunt down lions, tigers, and even kill elephants just for sport. I mean, do you think those people, when they get on the other side, the animals are going to let them in? I doubt it. That's my belief. Uh, yeah, well, they, they, they're going to have a lot of explaining to do. Uh, uh, that's for uh, sure. I mean, it's just, it's just that, you know, they do stuff that there's no excuse for. It. There's no excuse for. It. Absolutely. I agree fully. You know, but again, you know, for anyone who's, I think most people who listen to this program would be an animal lover for sure. But you think about it, you know, those those who are not, they really don't understand it. I've, I, you know, I'm on Facebook, Ray is on Facebook, and I sometimes encounter people talking about animals like they're nothing, and I'm just like, wow, you know, it blows me away. Because well, I have a pet group, for those of you who don't know, on Facebook, it's called Beyond the Bridge pet grief support for parents and it's uh, you know for people who've lost their pet mainly but we post other things informative funny whatever and everybody in there believe me they know their animals have a soul well they yeah you, you turn around and you, you you look at things and 
And the, you know, like I like we were just said before, you know, the animals crawl up on you. They know when you're hurting, when you're not hurting. Uh, they care about you. As long as you treat them good, you know. They, I mean, and, and you should treat anything good. As long as you treat them good, uh, you know, there, there shouldn't be a problem. I mean, this whole thing with just you, you see things. You know, they just throw the animal out and and just and run away. Oh yeah. Now, when I was down, uh, when I was down in Right. When I was down in New Jersey, that was a notorious thing, people going back from vacation to wherever they come from. Uh, you know, they would just open up, they stop at a red light, light turned green, the door would open up, they'd throw the dog out, and they'd take off. And it was heartbreaking to see that dog running after that car to yeah. try to get him. Yeah, and they, you know, the animal, the dog doesn't understand why or whatever type of animal it may be, they're yeah. like, what did I do? What did I do? Especially with dogs, you know. They're like, you know, so apologetic. That's the best word I have for dogs. They just, you know, want to make everybody happy. And they can't understand that that whole abandonment thing. Because in their nature, in their, their tribe, their family, they would not do that. They don't understand it. And well, I've seen, seen for cats. Yeah, and I've seen people put cats in a bag, kittens in a bag, and throw them in the oh, uh, river. I mean yeah, that I that know. that that just tears me apart. You know, I that know. just that's, tears me. That that's something else. Yes. Yes, and they could find a way. You know, take them to the humane society. Something, give them a chance, at least, instead yeah. of what they're doing. Now we're coming up, we're here in the last few seconds of the show, but if you have any questions about animals or want communication with your pet, I do animal communication, I do animal energy healing. Uh, you can read about it on my website, CherokeeBillySpiritualAdvisor.com, and you will see lots of reviews from people about the work that I do, and it amazes me and I'm grateful for it. And I thank you, Ray, for being here every week with me. It really means a lot, your help, your support being here. I really appreciate it. Well, I, like, I, I appreciate you asking me to be here. Well, you know, it's a chance for both of us to share what we know with others. Anyway, the show's about to end. God bless everybody. Take care. Bye.